You've heard of large language models like ChatGPT. 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 It can answer questions, write stories, and even engage in conversation. But if you want to build a business that uses this technology, you'll need to ask yourself an important question. How do I take this raw model and this raw intelligence and actually customize this to my use case? How do I make There has been tons of news about ChatGPT, GPT-4, generative AI, and large language models. They all seem so useful and easy to use, but in reality, these models are huge. The biggest hurdle with these kind of models is training. They all need distributed training, and this is the topic of today's video. What is distributed training, how it works, and some of the concepts and libraries associated with it. Before we dive into distributed training, let's first understand what PyTorch is. PyTorch is an open source machine learning framework that is primarily used for developing and training deep neural networks. It was developed by Facebook's Fair team. PyTorch allows developers to create and manipulate tensors. It also provides automatic differentiation pool called AutoGrad Engine, which enables the calculation of gradients automatically, making it easier to train complex neural networks. Though AutoGrad is beyond the scope of this video, but we can still get an overview of what AutoGrad is because it's an important feature of PyTorch. The AutoGrad feature of PyTorch is a large part of what makes PyTorch a fast and flexible framework for building deep learning projects. It does this by easing the computation of the partial derivatives, also called gradients, that drive backpropagation-based learning. I'm not going to belabor the math here, although if you'd like a refresher, go ahead and download the notebook and follow along in detail. The important concept here is that when we're training our model, we compute a loss function, which tells us how far our model's prediction is from the ideal. We then need to find the partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to the model's learning weights. These de derivatives tell us in what direction we have to adjust the weights in order to minimize the loss. This involves the iterative application of the chain rule of differential calculus over every path through the computation. AutoGrad makes this computation faster by tracing your computation at runtime. Every output tensor from your model's computation carries with it a history of the operations that led to it. This history allows the rapid computation of derivatives over the graph all the way back to your model's learning weights. In addition, because this history is gathered at runtime, you'll get the correct derivatives even if your model has a dynamic structure with decision branches and loops. This offers a lot of flexibility over tools that depend on analysis of a static computation graph. That was a good overview of AutoGrad. You can watch the full video from the link in the description. Jumping back to PyTorch Distributed. So PyTorch Distributed generally comes in places or in applications where you have deep learning models that needs to be trained. And these models are very really huge, something like large language model where GPT-4 or GPT-3, which are trained on billions of parameters, or image models like UNET or some other image models. So there is a way to train those big, huge models in distributed computing. And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. Distributed training, there are two popular paradigms. The first one is data parallelism, uh, where uh, it wants to solve the problem where the data is too large and we need to have uh, multiple resources to process those data in parallel. Uh, in this case, usually there will be uh, multiple models. Uh, sometimes we have uh, one model replica per device, uh, and then the, those model replicas will be synchronized across different devices. And for the model parallelism, uh, it's trying to solve the problem where the model is too large and it does not fit in one device or one server so that you will have to position your model or shard your model into multiple shards and then put a different shard on a different device or a different server so that you can host a larger uh, models. The uh, PyTorch distributed package offers features for uh, both data parallel and uh, model parallel. And you can also combine these features to build a, a hybrid parallel applications. Uh, this deck here uh, shows a very high level view of the PyTorch uh, distributed package. Uh, in the first layer, there are uh, APIs. We have a uh, distributed data parallel or DDP and also the RPC package. And underneath that, we have uh, collective communications and peer-to-peer -peer communications. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer communications, I think it's, a, it's common it's where you have a caller and a colleague, sender and receiver. Uh, but for the collective communication, it's a uh, uh, this is more popular in the data parallel training. Uh, in this case, uh, where you have multiple uh, peers or processes wants to join the same communication operation. Uh, for example, uh, say one pro uh, each process has a number, has a different number, and then maybe you have 10 processes. And then maybe you want to compute the average uh, across all those different numbers. So to do that, you can use the collective communication. 
where all the 10 processes kind of join the same collective communication and providing their uh, individual number as the input and getting the average as the output from the collective communication. So those are two different communication patterns uh, we use in a distributed package. And underneath that, uh, you can also choose uh, from different options, communication uh, backend options or third party options. For collectives, uh, there are Nico. Nico is NVIDIA's collective communication library uh, or MPI or Glue. And for peer to peer communication, you can choose uh, TensorPy or Process Group or Thrift. In today's talk, uh, we'll mainly focus on the API layer. Uh, basically, uh, I'm going to go through uh, the details of. Uh, How do you synchronize those uh, model replicas? The local training actually happens independently on each of those model, or each of those model replica and each device. They are going to process their uh, different input splits, so they are going to have different gradients. And the, the DDP feature is responsible for synchronizing those model replicas. And there are different options to do that. One option is that we can do the synchronization in the backward pass, where uh, whenever a gradient is ready in one process, we kick off a communication, a collective communication, so that we get a global average on that gradient and put that gradient value, the average gradient value, back to the dog bite field. And another option is that we can also do the communication in the optimized step, uh, meaning that we wait for all the gradients are ready, and then we can do the gradient uh, communication or average in one shot, or we can also wait even for the gradients to be applied to the model, and then we do the model averaging in one shot. So those are two options. Uh, while distributed data parallel has become very popular, it takes more GPU memory than it needs because the model weights and optimizer states are replicated across all DDP workers. Recently, Facebook introduced fully sharded data parallel, FSDP, a faster AI training with fewer GPUs. In standard data parallel training methods, a copy of the model is present on each GPU and a sequence of forward and backward passes are evaluated on only a shard of the data. After these local computations, the parameters and optimizers for each local process are shared with the other GPUs in order to calculate the global weight of data. In, for, in fully sharded data parallel, only a shard of the model is present on a GPU. Then locally, all weights are gathered from other GPUs by means of an all-gather step to calculate the forward pass. This gathering of weight is then performed again before the backward pass. After that backward pass, that the gradients are averaged and sharded across the GPUs by means of a reduced scatter step, which allows GPUs to update its local weight shard. Fully sharded uh, data parallel has been implemented in Python library called FairScale. FairScale is a PyTorch extension library for high performance and large scale training on one or multiple machines or nodes. FairScale is modular with users able to compose or combine multiple APIs and the latest distributed training techniques as part of their training loop. Fairscale supports data parallelism, the traditional means of using multiple devices simultaneously to train a new model. However, with recent advances in ML research, the sizes of models have greatly increased and vanilla data parallelism is no longer adequate to scale some of these up. Fairscale supports sharded training, optimization at scale, GPU memory optimization, and GPU speed optimization, in addition to data parallelism. Fairscale was open sourced by Facebook in 2020 and has been used internally by the PyTorch Lightning team in the production of M2M100, a multilingual machine translation model from Facebook AI, and SEER, a self-supervised computer vision model. Fairscale is used internally by the PyTorch Lightning team. So now the question comes, what is PyTorch Lightning? Uh, we won't dive too much into details of this. Um, we will cover it in a separate session, but PyTorch Lightning is more like a framework or a platform. So PyTorch Lightning structures your deep learning code and manages your training loop, unlocking productivity and scale at the flip of a switch. So you don't have to worry about different components of the ML lifecycle. You only focus on writing the models and uh, developing algorithms and the rest of it is taken by taken care by the PyTorch Lightning. The framework is for researchers and ML practitioners who wants to build models that are easy to write, run, scale, read and debug.
uh, as mentioned in the uh, beginning of the talk, uh, the distributed model parallel uh, training tries to address the problem that, sorry, let me enlarge my slides a bit, try to address the problem that the model is too large, does not fit in one device or one machine, so that we need to partition a shorter model and put a different shard on different device or different machine. And RPC is one uh, solution to achieve that. There are also other solutions. Um, the RPC tried to solve that problem by providing three main features. The first one is a remote execution where you can run arbitrary user functions or modules remotely. And this is what you can expect from any RPC system. And the second feature is a remote reference. It allows you to access and reference and share uh, a remote data object without actually fetching back the uh, actual data in that object. So you can view this as a distributed share pointer and it will also do automatic reference counting for you. And the uh, third main feature is a distributed autograph. Uh, when we talk about, in the first slide in DDP, we went through the, uh, for example, and I mentioned that uh, there's autograd engine involved in the, uh, in the forward and backward path. And the problem with autograd engine is that the autograd engine is a per process concept. So when we are trying to go beyond the process boundary or machine boundary, uh, it, I mean, the autograd engine won't scale in that way. If you call the uh, backward on the loss in the last state process, it won't automatically reach out to all the participating processes and compute gradients for you. So the distributed autograd is trying to cover that gap. Uh, it has its own ways to stitch, stitch together the local autograph graphs and also coordinate uh, multiple local autograph uh, engines. Let's dive a little deeper into this. Let's talk about pipeline parallelism. So training large models can lead to out of memory when the size of the model is too large for a single GPU. To train such a large model, layers can be pipelined across different GPU devices as described in Gpipe. So Gpipe is a paper from Google uh, that talks about pipeline parallelism. You can see the link in the description for more details. Gpipe first shards the model across different devices where each device hosts a shard of the model. A shard can be a single layer or a series of layers. However, Gpipe splits a mini batch of data into micro batches and feeds it into the device hosting the first shard. The layers on each device process these micro batches and it sends the output to the following shard device. In the meantime, it is ready to process the micro batch from the previous shard device. By pipelining the input in this way, Gpipe is able to reduce the run idle time of the devices and thereby reducing the idle time of the GPUs. So the SageMaker model parallel library features uh, an efficient pipeline training mechanism. And as we will see uh, shortly, uh, this is a feature that addresses uh, this low GPU utilization problem in uh, model parallelism. It also features automated model partitioning, which means that um, you don't need to worry about how to partition the model. Uh, the, the model parallel library actually analyzes your uh, model and then comes up with the right partition for you. And of course, being a part of SageMaker, it inherits all the managed aspects of uh, SageMaker and all its features. So you don't need to worry about managing your own infrastructure. Uh, and it tightly integrates with uh, TensorFlow and PyTorch, which means that you don't need to worry about the intrinsics of how these uh, frameworks handle GPU allocations. Uh, and you can get started with the library with only a few lines of code change, regardless of what model. So in short, uh, PyDodge Lightning and SageMaker automates a lot of this training and parallelization work for you. And you only have to focus on building the models. So yeah, that's all from our side today. And we will see you in our next video.